things you should know about schooling in Canada. One, there is a welcome center for new students in Ontario. Two, kids start school the year they turn four. Three, kids can read from the age of four and letter recognition from even earlier. What can you do about that now? Four, schooling in Canada, how does it work? Five, Canada, lifestyle and adjusting to your new school. And lastly, six, support for special needs children in mainstream schools. So one, there is a welcome center in Ontario for new students. So when you come to Canada, you're gonna start the process of finding a home. And once you know where you're going to live, then you know which region you belong to. And once you know that, you can then make contact on the website with your region in terms of making an appointment and going through to the Welcome Centre. So I remember when Georgia and Madison and I went to the Welcome Centre for the first time, we had enough our appointment set. We walked in with all of our documentation and we met with this lady who welcomed us in Afrikaans. And I can tell you now, I almost cried like a little baby. It was so wonderful to meet her. And um, really what they do in these meetings is really talk about your kids' academic levels, where they're at, look at their previous marks from the schools in South Africa. Um, you can throw questions at them. Um, it's a really great session to have. Also, it reduces anxiety a lot. I'm sure your children have a lot of questions and the whole story about just wanting to fit in, it's really, really important to do this meeting. Also, they will help you with um, getting documentation to your new school. They'll talk about your new, new school. They know everything about the schools in the area. Um, I remember my daughter started grade nine and that means grade nine is high school. It's your first year of high school when you go to school here in Canada and French is a subject and we had to ask them, listen, what are we going to do? Georgia can't speak French. And so then they will give you all the answers with regard to that. And just that you do know the answer, they gave Georgia a credit for Afrikaans. And so she never had to do French. So we'll get to a little bit about the languages and subjects later in high school. But yes, the Welcome Center is fantastic. And uh, make sure that you check the website and take all the necessary documentation with you. Um, I'm just going to read off, um, I make it made a note of all the documents. You'll need the proof of your child's age, your proof of your address. That's why you need to have a home already. So two documents are required there. Um, a proof of your child's citizenship or just your immigration status. Your immunization records are very, very important. Um, you're going to need that right through your children's school career all the way to high school. Very, very important. Make sure that you get that done now in your country. Uh, make sure that there are details and dates for every single vaccination. And then also you'll need to bring through your educational records. And then um, the other note on the website, it said that if you're not the child's parent or if you have sole custody, please bring proof of custody or a court order. So those documents are going to be really important. Two, kids start school the year they turn four in Canada. So the school year in Canada runs from September to June. And the calculation of when your child starts school will be within a calendar year, so from January to December. So in South Africa, kids start school a little bit later than here. And um, I think maybe starting school at the age of four gets these kids uh, almost adjusted into a more formal system and syllabus. Um, but if your kids, I would say, are between the ages of four and five when you get to Canada, it would be wise to just get them up to speed on certain things. Um, so stay tuned for that. I got some fabulous tips from some of my friends who've come over to Canada with small children. So stay tuned uh, for all of those tips. But really don't panic. Thousands and thousands of children have come over to Canada um, and integrated into the Canadian school system without a hitch. Um, so it's good to just have this information and be alerted to certain things and why not help yourself and your kids and avoid a struggle. And of course, having the power and the knowledge and getting them up to speed maybe a little bit will really help them with the integration and settling into Canada. Three, kids can start reading from the age of four in Canada and letter recognition even earlier. So what can you do now? I, uh, If you're not living in Canada and you're on your way over, maybe these tips are going to be able to help you. Um, so if you are at the age of four, or your kid is at the age of four, these are the things that you can start working on. So number one, recognizing letters, the letter name and the letter sound, phonics. So that's one. Number two would be the basic word recognition. And a good goal um, is that children should master 20 sight words by the end of kindergarten. Um, number three, start to put simple words together for your child. And then one of my favorites is to type up or write up words very, very clearly, like simple words, put them on flashcards or pieces of paper and stick them on objects in the house. So for instance, the word toilet, and obviously don't write it in capital letters. So toilet, door, wall, uh, toaster, maybe that's a hard one, um, 
carpet, window, stick them on those specific objects. So just so that your kids can start to visually look at the words, even if they can't spell, they can't anything, kids are like sponges. It's amazing. So really all that is, is called accidental reading. Um, and already one of my friends, she started doing this. She's still in Cape Town. They're trying to get to, to Canada. Um, and so she started doing this with her son. He's four. And she said, you cannot believe within 10 days what this kid is able to do. It's just letter recognition. It's fabulous. So that's a great tip. The other one is to make flashcards with sight words. That would really, really help. And then start introducing very simple picture books with basic words. So at four, I mean, kids are amazing. They're going to pick up this stuff. So start doing that. And then the other thing is to ask your child to tell you about their drawings or their paintings. So sit with them and thereafter write their words on the art. So as they describe it, and this will connect the written text to the speech. So a lot of these tips, you like trying to write them all down. Please don't worry. I will be posting a very, very detailed blog on my website called justmyscene.com. Go to the website. I should have it loaded within a couple of days after releasing and publishing this video. Um, and there will be links and tips for absolutely everything. I'm going to read one of these just that you've got two of them already. So the one is called Ontario Reading Expectations. It looks like they use um, this uh, thing called Uka Island, O-O-K-A Island. It's from kindergarten to grade one. There's some great reading um, expectations and outlines for you to maybe go and have a look at if you're into the detail. Um, and the other one is called, it's an app that my friend in South Africa was telling me about, which is really cool for her son. It's called ABC Kids. Look up on your phone. It's called Tracing and Phonics. And it's called RV App Studios. ABC Kids, Tracing and Phonics, RV App Studios. So you can have a look, put that onto your, um, onto your iPads or onto your phones for your kids. Four, schooling in Canada. How does it really work? Okay, so let's get into the nitty gritty of this. This is my favorite part, maybe because my kids are a little bit older and I've gone through this process. So these are the types of schooling systems you get. There are three. The one is private schools. The other is public schools. And within public schools, we have Catholic schools and French immersion. And the third one is homeschooling. So that's pretty easy. So let's start with the first one. So the public schooling system in Canada is unbelievable. I've spoken many times about how great this is. It's the top 10 in the world. I've put links into my blog uh, when I release it on where you can get that information, the ranking systems. We've just been blown away how schooling is done in Canada as a family. My girls have thrived in the public schooling system and exceeded their expectations versus their schooling in South Africa. Um, in a public schooling system, you're not required to wear a school uniform, so some kids love that. Um, what is really great is if you know where you're living and which region you're going to be in, you go to the region's website. Everything is on there that you need. You can actually find your own school on that website. There are some amazing, amazing private schools in Canada. So because we live in Oakville, I know of a few here already. The one would be Appleby College, which is right on Lakeshore Road. Another one is called um, King's Christian Collegiate, which is great. Those are both senior schools. And then an elementary school would be Rother Glen uh, Elementary, also beautiful, beautiful school. And it really depends on your situation and your child and in terms of what your requirements are. So there is also a list of all the private schools in Ontario. I've put the link in my blog and so go and have a look at that website. And then of course, Catholic schools. So Catholic schools are publicly funded in Alberta, Saskatchewan and Ontario. Um, kids are required to wear school uniforms if you go to the Catholic school. And the Catholic school board up operates completely independently uh, to the public school system. In fact, even sort of sporting tournaments are separate from public schools. So you can go to the website on my blog. It also gives you a full, full list of every single Catholic school in your area. And then the other one was homeschooling, which is perfectly legal. Obviously, the kids need to pass the government mandated exams to have their education officially recognized. So now within these schooling systems, which is public, private and homeschooling, there are two streams of schooling within these systems, and that will be French immersion and English track. So French immersion, bonjour, is a, a bilingual education system for kids who do not speak French as their first language, but the instruction is done in both French and English. So if they're taking whatever the different sciences, math, etc. It will be done in French and they will speak a lot of French, which is totally awesome. So you have the option when your child is really, really young to decide if you want to put your kid into a French immersion system. Um, so most of the school boards offer French immersion from grade one and some from even kindergarten. 
And then English track, kids will learn French as their second language at school starting from grade three or four till grade nine. Okay, let's talk about the public schooling system and how it's divided into different age groups and grades. I think that's gonna be able to help you. So just remember that every province in Canada has its own cutoff dates in terms of grades, school hours, they're all set by the local school boards. Um, so check on your local school board website for all of that information. So the first age category, which is junior and senior kindergarten, it's ages three to five, is called JK and SK. And the next area would be elementary school, and this is from grades one to eight. Um, so like I was saying, most parents walk their kids to school in the morning, uh, especially the little kids is what I'm saying. Um, sometimes they arrive on a sled, pulling them in the snow. I mean, these little gorgeous kids in pink and purple and all their snow kit and whatever, they walk to school with their parents. Um, unless the weather is like shocking, shockingly bad, the parents might drive their kids to school. And generally, if the weather is so, so torrid, it might become a snow day. And a snow day means that there's no school. And what, that, what really determines that is if a bus cannot drive safely. So if a bus cannot pick up children because parents go to work, they depend on the kids using the bus. If the bus cannot drive because it's too icy or too slippery or whatever, it's way too dangerous and they call it a snow day, you will be notified by your schooling phone app uh, that school is not happening today and the kids are so excited, usually they have a ball and then you have to make a plan. If you're working, you need to know what you're gonna be doing. Um, are they gonna stay at home? Is one parent gonna be at home? So that's just something to think about. We didn't have many snow days this year. Um, there are more snow days. The further from Ontario you move outwards where there's so much snow, it's incredible. Um, but that is a thing in Canada. All right, so more about elementary school. The school hours are generally in Ontario. Remember, they're different everywhere, but I know here in uh, the Ontario region, it's 8.45 in the morning, so it's quite late. Um, and they're in school at 3.05 p.m. So just check your website. It does differ across the board. In fact, it might even differ within Ontario. Okay, so the next one is called middle school, and that's grade seven and eight. So in many areas, elementary schools will incorporate grade seven and eight, just like the school that Maddie went to, James W. Hill, it's from grade one to grade eight. But you do get middle schools, and um, it's only grade seven and eight. It's great to have this as an option. My friend's daughter loves her middle school and it's smaller. She prefers it. And they can be very, very, very beneficial for some kids from an emotional point of view and from also a learning point of view. Finally, we get to high school. So I'm getting to the end of this. You're going to love this part. I get very excited maybe because my kids have now transitioned all the way through to high school. And as they get older, the more excited I get about the opportunities and things in Canada. And I love talking about high school and university now because that's where I'm at. So in South Africa, high school, uh, primary school is from grade one to grade seven. And then your high school in South Africa is from grade eight to grade 12. Correct. Okay. So in Canada, high school starts at grade nine, as you would have seen elementary schools from grade one to grade eight. Sometimes that can be very difficult. Just remember this. If your child is in grade nine in South Africa or going to grade nine and they come to Canada, they are going to be a junior all over again. And you know how hard it is when you start high school and you've done your, that freshman, that new horrible year of like, with all these grown up people at high school, now you're gonna do it again. And not only that, you're doing it in a new country with a new culture and you don't know anybody. So just be very sensitive and very aware of how that's going to work. And that happened with us with Georgia. She started grade nine and it was starting high school all over again. And it can be a major learning curve and it's quite stressful. It was stressful for me, it was stressful for Georgia. Hey, we made it. Um, so let me give you some information about high school. So um, the school hours uh, for high school in the Glen Abbey, Oakville area is 8.10. So 10 past 8 in the morning they start versus 8.45 elementary school and they finish school at 2.45, quarter 2.3 and elementary will then end at 3.05. So it gives you time to get to your other kids if you need to fetch them. Okay, so how do the school semesters work? So this is very specific to Ontario. Um, so one year is divided into two semesters. So forget everything you know about what's happening in South Africa and four terms and blah, blah, blah. There are only two semesters. And in each semester, there are four subjects, which means you have a total of eight subjects in a year, or we call them credits. So it's four subjects times two semesters is eight subjects or eight credits uh, that you need per year. So in your first semester, if you have geography and you have math and you have geography, math and sport as a subject and French or something like that, 
once you've completed those subjects in your first semester, you will get a full credit for that subject and you don't ever have to do it again. You're done with that year's credit. When the second semester comes along, you'll have your other four subjects, which might be English and biology and psychology and I don't know, stats, for instance. Uh, you will write those, you'll do your exams, you'll get your credits for them and you're done. And then you qualify, you have your eight subjects and you pass the year. What is amazing, it's super awesome about this, this way of doing school, is that when you write exams, you're only writing exams for four subjects. You're never doing eight subjects all at once. So what happens is, in a class day, you only go to school for four subjects, which means each period is 75 minutes long with a 75 minute lunch break, which is awesome. What it does mean is that, for instance, if you're doing geography for 75 minutes every single day for one term, you will know the ins and outs of that subject. I mean, you never stop talking about it, doing projects on it, assignments, etc. Uh, for me, it's just it's just a great way to learn. It's been super beneficial for our kids. Um, and then the minimum requirements to pass high school is your eight subjects times four years, which means you need 32 credits to pass. But you also need 40 volunteer hours to be able to graduate. If you do not have your 40 volunteer hours, they will not pass you and sometimes it comes as a major scruck uh, in your grade 12 when no one's got any volunteer hours and these kids are running around doing things for Mahala for free uh, to try and get volunteer hours. It is easy to get volunteer hours. Um, you can apply, you can go to youth camps as a counsellor and get volunteer hours. You can go to the Coast Street Mission and work there. You can babysit and not get paid and get people to sign your volunteer hours. There's a huge drive in Canada um, in terms of volunteering. It's beautiful. It's amazing. You can work at the Humane Society, do things that you want to do, and also do the things that are going to be beneficial towards your career and things that you want to study. If you want to work with pets and animals, go work at the Humane Society or volunteer at a veterinary clinic. Um, so there are cool things that you can do. Really important to think about that. But not much panic, don't worry about it now, that stuff will all come. So five, Canada lifestyle, adjusting to a new school, how's that all going to work? So when you land in Canada, specifically Ontario, you find a home, your kids are going to attend a school in the catchment area. You can literally, like I was saying earlier, type in your address on the school board website. It's on, it's called Find My School Halton um, and it spits out the school options for your kids. You're going to go pick Catholic school, public schools, there may, might be two school options in your area for where you live. Maybe your street is such that you can pick either one. So that's going to be great. Um, and once you've done that, your kids are going to start integrating into that school. They're going to ask you, I'm like, mom, I'm freaking out. I don't know what I'm supposed to wear to school. And all those new things are going to start happening in your house. And when you realize that actually there is kind of a school uniform, kids do kind of wear the same things. The one very big adjustment is that the kids speak differently. Your kids are going to start speaking differently. And the kids in Canada play completely different sports to what you used to. And the way that they do life and do school is completely different to how you perceive and see things and what you used to in South Africa. So you need to kind of be open minded and embrace the stuff. So talking about your kids speaking differently, your children, if they're very, very young, they will pick up Canadian very, very quickly. And why? Because they're sponges and whatever they hear for the most amount of time in the day, they're going to start sounding like that. Older kids start to speak Canadian because it's they want to fit in. That's what teenagers do, especially the younger, the teen, the tweens. They want to fit in. They start speaking Canadian. And when they come home, they speak South African. That's what happened to us. And so it also avoids the whole story of where you're from. Sometimes kids just don't want to go down that road all the time. They don't want to be different. They want to fit in. And so it's so much easier to say water than to say water because most people don't know what water is here. So allow your kids to do that. Don't make fun of them if by accident they say, hey, shall we go fill up with gas? Um, instead of the petrol, get petrol or let them become Canadian and don't laugh at them. Embrace it because it's important for them to feel like they fit in. All right. So the other thing is uh, it's completely normal for kids to leave the school grounds for lunch when they go to school. So look, this is quite a thing, but in elementary school, it's not the same everywhere. Um, it's very different. So in terms of 
how much time they're allowed off the school premises, which days or are they actually allowed to leave the premises. But I know in elementary school, Madison did leave school and she'd go to her friend's houses, take her packed lunch and eat at her friend's house, which was super cool. Sometimes they chuck pizzas in the oven, make popcorn, drink soda. Oh my word, they have a ball and then they're off back to school because their friends live so close to the school, which is that's why it's so great to live close to school. Um, but it's not at all elementary schools. However, at high school, it's completely the norm. Remember, at high school, kids are driving already. So from the age of 16, kids are driving. Um, and I mean, Georgia drives Madison to school now that she's at high school and she drives, she takes my car. And sometimes five or four kids will pile into a car and they'll go to Starbucks or they'll just go to the local grocery store that's right near the school. Um, like Sobeys, for instance, they have tables and chairs in the grocery store, like near the checkout area, and kids sit there and have their lunch. All right, another big adjustment is that discipline in South Africa is a lot more strict than it is in Canada. And I think uh, as parents, it's very different and the culture is completely different. It's a major adjustment for certain character types when they come to Canada. And the environment here is kind of inclusivity and freedom of expression. And that can be really hard for parents, not always for the kids. The kids are amazing. They kind of adjust and move and are kind of buoyant with all of that. And I think as parents, we've grown up going to school in a very strict environment and being the parents we are, we used to our kids having a certain environment at school. And now the kids are going to school. There's no school uniform. They can paint their nails. In fact, they even have false nails when they go to school. Some kids will stroll in there with bleached hair, some shaven heads, some, you name it. It's just, I love it. I sit in the car park and I just watch the kids. It's so, so cool. So with all of that, I think you need to maybe remember that regardless, your children will find friends that are a lot like them and they're going to find their way and they'll find friends that they can relate to. And in may, many, many cases, your kids are actually seen as the coolest things ever because they're different. They knew, first of all, sometimes I find often when people come to Canada, they start school, not always at the beginning of a school year. So if you're starting school year where it's like either in March, like we did or whatever, you're walking into school, you're definitely the new kid on the block. You've got a different accent, um, etc. People want to ask you about Africa because they don't know about South Africa, but you're coming from Africa. So <laughs> it's really cool. So don't worry too much about that. But yeah, the discipline thing, it's very different. Um, and I think that a lot of the time you're on your own. You need to produce work and do it yourself. And people are not going to push you to do it. I think a tip that can help you uh, with your kids as well and adjusting would be to really, if your kids are really small, meet the parents. Um, and really converse with the teachers. They're really, really super helpful. The guidance teachers as well are really great. Um, and the more you meet parents and have the kids over at your house, um, they might then invite you over to theirs. And it's really important that you as a parent need to put yourself out there. And if not just for yourself, but just for your kids. You know, it's not easy for any, any child to adjust to a new environment, let alone adults, I think. And so um, I, I tend to think that the older your kids are, um, the more difficult it is. You know, the younger your kids are, they get integrated into school, they find new friends, etc., and they go. But with teenagers, I've found, they are already, I mean, friends, that's the sole purpose of why they live, right? Parents become less important, friends become super important. And so to pull them away from their friends and immigrate and for them to start again in a new country can be seriously, seriously difficult and it, it can break your heart. It's really important to know that stuff is going to happen. It's not going to be easy. It is a transition. There are going to be challenges. And one thing I do know with confidence that time is a healer. And I know it's the oldest, cheesiest saying ever, but it's so true. I could tell you about at least 10 South African friends of mine that have moved here to Canada with really young children. And they've kind of just said, Geez, isn't it amazing what a year and a half can do? For some people, it's not a year and a half though. For some people, they're like, okay, three years, we as adults feel fully settled and this is home. But, you know, just in terms of your kids and getting used to things, literally one year can make so much of a difference. And if that's just your goal to say, hey, it's going to be hard, it's going to be a challenge. But if I can just take one year and push through uh, with my kids, it will be better. And so really, if you can, trust me on this one. A very important thing for you perhaps to consider is with all of the adjustment and change, get your kids involved in sport. And even in South Africa, I would talk to friends and we would all say sport is the best thing for children ever. It releases energy, they meet more friends and um, they find a way to release as well, which is really, really important. So 
I think that there's so many options for kids in Canada, but what I wanted to tell you about that I was so excited about is in elementary school, children are offered music as a subject. So you don't have to pay for it. Your kids can learn from really young how to play the trumpet, the piano, the cello, the clarinet, the flute, the drums. It's amazing. So just one other quick side note is that if you're joining in a school year where it's in the middle of the school year, um, often kids would have selected their instrument already and your child might not have the option to choose their number one, which might be drums or the trumpet or whatever. But please get in touch with your school and find out how you can get them to find the instrument that they're interested in. But this is really, really cool. So in elementary school, if I'll speak for your daughter, for instance, if they played uh, netball, we don't have netball here, but we do have volleyball, which is huge here. And we have basketball. Uh, and if they don't enjoy that, they can hit the girls' soccer team. They are, soccer is huge here. Um, the sports are slightly different from elementary school to high school. So, for instance, if your child is doing, uh, runs hurdles, heckies, in primary school, which is quite normal, they don't actually offer that in track and field in elementary. They only start hurdles at high school. So, that's something different. But high school, let me tell you, the sports list is as long as my arm i'm going to grab a list and then i'm going to read it to you because it's just so fantastic to see listen to all the sports that are available at georgia's high school now it might differ from school to school but have a look at this so we have lacrosse boys and girls we have boys and girls basketball boys and girls volleyball boys and girls rugby girls rugby here is huge 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 um track and field cross country field hockey ice hockey cheerleading curling, ski and snowboard. Oh yes, you go away for like a whole day, guys, and your kids go skiing in the mountains. Um, baseball, badminton, softball, crossbow, wrestling, golf, hiking, swim, tennis, and ultimate frisbee. Take that all in. Isn't that amazing? And that is not all. There are clubs that are just incredible. So in terms of clubs, they differ also from school to school. So we've got art club, auto club, band, which is the jazz band, strings, chess, creative writing, debate team, engineering, French club, improv, awesome, knitting, math, society, photography and yearbook, programming, choir, social change and justice, uh, sound and lighting, stock market, robotics and workshop. I mean, it's just absolutely amazing. At Georgia School, uh, they have a green screen. So when the announcements are done in the mornings, they've got a team of kids who, who are part of the club, who do um, sound, etc., who are interested in this kind of thing. They do the announcements with a green screen and they taught how to do announcements. It's video. It's amazing. So the opportunities are cool. All right. And so the final point is um, support for special needs children in Canada in the mainstream schools. And this... This point is very, very close to my heart. I have two beautiful friends of mine in Canada um, who have special needs children, and I got a lot of information from them, which I've put into my blog. So please go and have a look. Um, you'll get everything that you need there. Maybe not everything, but at least their pointers, websites, you name it, uh, where you can go and have a look and get information for your family. So not only are you in the process of probably moving or thinking of moving to a different country or coming to Canada, but you have a special needs child and it may be that you have other children too or even that your kid has just been newly diagnosed maybe you're a single parent with a special needs child and perhaps your other children are struggling with their special needs sibling and so this can be really hard it's a sensitive area and especially exhausted parents can become completely overwhelmed with the newness of a new country um, and not only that but then just all the requirements that your special child may need so i've given commentaries of two uh, very good friends here, like I mentioned, and it'll give you some great insights. So if I can be of any encouragement to you, just know that there are countless agencies out there that can help you that are online, uh, for instance, like the Autism Society. Um, make contact with these agencies and let them guide you as to how you need to approach things. I could list a whole lot I just don't want to leave anybody out. I got information from my one friend living in Halifax. She's South African. Her daughter has Down syndrome and she's now eight. So that will give you some insight into that. And then my other friend, uh, Carolyn, her daughter, Mackenzie, we call her Z. Um, she's now 19 and she is a, a complex, medically fragile, special needs child. So in terms of Z, she is nonverbal. Um, she's in a wheelchair and she's fed with a G-tube. Um, and she also is epileptic and so and then there's auto also she's on the autism spectrum and so then she 
requires different kind of needs to my other friend. And so that will give you, in terms of Z, just all of those details of how you can go about bringing your child over from whichever country, if it's from South Africa to here. Um, and that's going to be really important for you. But I think for you right now, there's so much information I've given you. It's way too much to go through. What I wanted to say, just in terms of this, is maybe your next steps is that you there's funding available there's respite care there's all these different things and you need to register for all of that but for you right now all your documentation from your medical doctor your family doctor you're going to need to bring over and so you need to ask them to kind of write a letter um to be able to share all the current information that they have about your son or daughter uh, with the doctors here in Canada. And once you have that, you will then be connected with doctors over here in Canada who will then refer you to specialists, pediatricians, etc. And obviously something to think about is that when you come to Canada, you're not going to have medical insurance for the first three months. And so bring all the necessary stuff that you need. So from all your safety equipment from gloves to masks, syringes or whatever you need, if it's um, pumps for the G-tube or whatever, things break. And in three months, if you hear, it can run up massive costs in Canada if you don't have health insurance and obviously if you haven't been able to access funding yet. So it's really important to bring all your stuff with you as much as you can, medications, etc. That's going to be really important for you. And so um, I hope that the blog is going to be helpful to you. There are links to all the funding websites. There will be links to how to access respite care, respite camps, um, how nursing works, um, how it works to get your um, special needs child to school, what do wheelchair buses look like, um, you know, will they collect kids from and drop them off at school, do they have special care, do they have nurses, what is an EA, an educational assistant, um, how does the plan work, and you will be so excited to see how much support and care there is in Canada and the different options. So, um, I hope this was helpful. Don't forget your immunization records. Get those up to date. And I hope this information helped. There'll be lots of links on the website. I'll give it to you again. It's justmyscene.com. If you really like this video and it was helpful, please click like and subscribe for my next videos. Thank you so much, guys.